Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my WWE Wall Review for tonight, Monday, March 14, 2016, from Philadelphia's sister city, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, tonight. To be in Philly next week. But tonight's we head towards down that lofty world of Boston area, especially coming off of Wall Block. I thought tonight's Wall was. Decent, up and down. You have some decent action, some decent segments, including a big return. Kind of a return. I want to make components in a WrestleMania match has been out for a little bit. As you see from my subtitle, the morning to come back with a vengeance. Plus, two more WrestleMania components got into some confrontations. I have to admit, a few people in WrestleMania matches that collided a little bit. So we head down that road. So let's get started with the new day. New day rocks. They're trying to be baby faces. They're, they're trying to turn up the faces, but the lines are doing It didn't work when they first started, as, faces, as we all know. But I think now that they're so old with the fans, I think turning faces could be an interesting decision, especially when they're feuding against the League of Nations. Despite me and a lot of others groaning at the start of the feud at Fastlane, the New Day's try to make this feud a good thing with the funny videos they made on the internet. Because they did wrestle two members of the League of Nations this past Saturday on Warblock, being Seamus and Barrett in an okay tag team affair to open up Warblock. So we get to open up War with another tag team title match. This time, not only is the League of Nations members not Seamus and Barrett, but it's Rusev and Del Wheel going at the new day, which is comprised of Biggie and Xavier actually getting there. It was cool to see Xavier in the ring. Because he's using the one that's on the ring side with the trombone. Instead, it was Kofi at ring side. It was still interesting to see the new day do the double team move without the which was late, though. Because they came up with the booty old cereal. They make sure you ain't booty. Indeed. I would get that. I would have a New Day shirt, but I would get that because it comes with the box and the cereal. Shirt. The shirt that has the cereal box on it. To make there's no actual cereal. But still. Anyway. Uh, this match was a little bit okay. A little bit better than the match at World Block. It was fun. It was not as good as the match last week when New Day wrestled y 2 AJ. A really good tag team match for the tag team match. Really good. This match tonight was decent. With New Day taking over early until, of course, the brute strength of the Bulgarian brute, Rusev, and of course, Del Rio, with help from Sheamus and I think Barry was out there too. Yeah, they both were out there giving him a one more man advantage because New Day always has the man advantage, but tonight, League of Nations did. They had two guys at ringside. And then they get involved with Woods coming in. And Vicky gets isolated. But he got slammed by Rusev. And he got destroyed for a bit. So then, after uh, Biggie got back in there, with some big moves, missing a spear, including uh, trying to go for the big ending at one point. But then. Rusev would come in trying to go for the accolade. Kofi got on the turnbuckle. But he got taken down by Barrett. And he beat up both Barrett and Sheamus. And also Del Rio as well. Taking him all out. And with Kingston helping distract. Not just referee but also distracting Rusev after he attacked the rest of the League of Nations. Rusev got caught by Xavier. Capitalizing on that Kofi distraction. Walled him up. Even holding the tights, one to, three, one to three victory for the New Day. Retaining New Day retains. New Day retains the tag team titles. But they may have won the battle. But it may not be winning the war. As the New Day was attacked by the League of Nations in a beatdown following this segment. If they want to turn New Day face as I, as I said in the beginning, there's an interesting way to do it. And a decent way to do it. With... New Day getting beat down. But the Liga Nation with all of them nailing their finishers. Shane with the broke kick. The ball hammer from Del Rio's partner Barrett. And the stump 
unto Xavier from their wheel. So, despite this view not being the best, hey, they're at least they're trying to put some effort into it. Later on, Sheamus challenged New Day to a match at WrestleMania, and it'll probably be accepted. What kind of match would it be? A 4 on 3 handicap match? Where the titles all on the line? Or is it going to be a regular tag team title match? We've just seen two of them, you know, within a three day span. And we saw Del Rio and Rusev fail tonight on Wall. And we saw Sheamus and Barrett fail on Wall. But maybe, maybe like Sheamus and Rusev. Or Rusev, and, you know what I mean? What kind of direction they're going to take when it comes to what Pacific match are going to be all New Day and League of Nations are going to be in. Or as New Day likes to say, League of Booty! I even saw Vince's booty sign. Which again is because he's kind of out of touch most of the time. So there you go. Decent tag team match to open us up, especially with the interesting, kind of great executed segment with New Day turning face by being sympathetic figures as they got beat down by the League of Booty. League Nations following the match. Now we have Dean Ambrose coming up next. A little bit disappointed for this match at Roblox. Uh, talked about it on my Attack Sports today because I didn't make a proper Roblox review because I didn't watch it live because I was at an independent wrestling show on Saturday night. A local company, XICW, my friend recommended me to it. The Extremely Extreme Intense Championship Wrestling event. It was awesome. Especially you had Wino there, Tomasso Ciampa was there. And EC3 was there. In decent matches, fun matches, especially Chopper uh, wrestled Wynum in an awesome match. So I'm definitely going to the events. More events for XICW. Especially the so called Best in Detroit events, which is where they get like the big people. So I did watch Roblox eventually. And the match between Dean Ambrose and Twitch Bridge was great. Fun match. Minus the ending, of course. As we all feared, when Derby has an opportunity to do something shocking, to shake things up. Especially fuck Roman Reigns, they fail every time. As Ambrose did lose the Triple Rich. And they fucked it up too with the screwy ending with him thinking he won, but his feet were on the rope. Like, not even fucking close to the wall. So Ambrose talk about that, but he pushed it off as he prepares for his next obstacle. WrestleMania, where he is still scheduled now after he lost the Triple Rich. To take on Brock Lesnar in a no holds barred street fight. So then, here comes Lesnar. And Lesnar's adv uh, advocate, Mr. Paul Heyman, came out saying, Ambos, you may have lost against Triple H, but that's not going to be as bad as it's going to be when, when you get destroyed by my beast. My conqueror, Brock Lesnar. So as Eamon started talking, Lesnar wanted a piece of Ambrose, or people specifically, Ambrose wanted a piece of Lesnar. Wanting revenge for all the beatdowns Lesnar's giving him, specifically the one that Lesnar gave him the night after fast lane that set up this no holds bar match when Ambrose challenged him to it. But Lesnar didn't want any piece of Ambrose, especially when Ambrose bought out a secret weapon, a billy club. And Lesnar did get close to the ring. But as he was going into the ring, Ambrose nailed at him, but Lesnar went out before getting any more physical with Dean Ambrose. Later on in the evening, though, Dean Ambrose got a little special surprise. Mick Foley. Now, we all kind of, we heard about Mick Foley coming in. For an angle. I thought he may be involved in the angle with Vincent Shane and Tanker because of the Hell in a Cell history. But instead, he got involved in the Dean Ambrose situation. Saying, Ambrose, you should not be facing off against Brock Lesnar, or at least not facing off with that weapon. So he gave another weapon, which I would love to see, actually see use at Mania. Barbed wire cover steel, barbed wire cover baseball bat. Now, this could be a sh violent match if they let it. Now they're going more edgy now. Heck, we saw blood the last couple weeks, especially tonight. And one of the best segments of the night. They're going more edgy again. With the content. And if they let Ambrose use that ball wire bat, it would be awesome. Especially 
Last time we had like a no holds ball speed fight, kind of like this. It was 10 years ago, and was being 22, also involving Mick Foley in a match against Edge, what they call a hardcore match, which was awesome, by the way. Flaming tables and everything. So Ambrose and Lesnar could be a fight. As much as we would love to have seen Ambrose and Triple H for the title, or at least Ambrose and Reigns, or anybody but Reigns for the championship, and WrestleMania, we have to live with this, and I think it's an interesting second option. It's a lot better than the possibility of seeing Y back against Kalisto. We're heading in that direction. And tonight, Y back with Dick on Kalisto's tag team partner, Venom! I mean, Sin Cara. Didn't he look like Venom tonight? He had the old black thing on. You know, and Kalisto was all in white, by the way. So we saw last week Y back's taunting Kalisto and wants a shot at the United States Championship at WrestleMania. Well, he proved his point tonight as he beat the crap out of St. Carl's by St. Carl's best efforts. An okay matchup, trying to go for his big moves. But he got caught with not one, but two, two shell shocks. With I backslash gold, but I can least the whole time as he delivered both shell shocks. Much of the victory for the big guy who wants to beat up the little guy. So. There you go. So, I said it last week, it's like, you know, with Kalisto and Ryback, the direction they're going with, we all can't match, we're just, ugh. it's like, what a, what a match. You know, it's like, I'm glad Kalisto's getting anybody but their wheel. We should say anybody but Ryback. <laughs> but hey. So now on to our next scenario. Stephanie McMahon coming out after a great promo last week introducing Triple H saying that you want hope. The hope is what you live on. You live through hope. Hope you're going to get that thing. Hope you're going to get that new job. Hope you're going to get everything, but it betrays you. Like, you live on. That's why you live on guys like Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. You want one of them to be the guy. You, cl you cling on Roman Reigns you want him to end the terror. You you hope that he's the one to beat the authority. Well, we want the authority to go down, but I don't think we want Roman Reigns to be the guy to take you down. I would have Shane McMahon take you down. Or importantly, the guy that came out to interrupt Triple Reigns, anybody but Reigns. Especially if it's, I would love that if it was Dolph Ziggler who came out. Now, we saw Dolph Ziggler kind of get punished last week by a tweet that got him into a 4-1 handicap match against the League of Nations. 4-1 elimination match. He did eliminate, I think he eliminated one member, I think two. But he still got beat. So he came out and the trip rage. They're trying to, like, I've been saying it for a while about them trying to sell Wayne. They're trying to push him so hard. You know, trying to make him the guy, you know, the chosen one. You know, the guy that we should go behind and we should cheer on. I said it a couple weeks ago. I'll say it again. We're not fucking buying it. Hey, yo, we're not fucking buying it. We're not fucking buying it anymore. Nah, 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 nah. I even applaud for trying their best to sell Reigns. Especially after he won in Philly back in December. You know, making it genuine, but even that didn't. Sway the haters. They still booed him. So, so we have Ziggler come out, and I wish Ziggler was on against Triple H, man. Like anybody but Reigns. That's what Bray Wyatt said last year, and guess what? It's true. Anyone but you, Roman. Anyone but you. Hell, we don't have to see why the Triple H. Who, who knows what Wyatt's going to do now? Especially if he pussied out against Lesnar on Saturday. Having it be Hopper and Lesnar, instead of the advertised Wyatt Lesnar, standing up for SummerSlam, fucking cop out, fucking puss out, you know. And I love Ziggler's promo here. He's like, I got nothing to lose. I've been punished enough, and I'm not going to quit. You, know, you can do whatever you want to me, but I'm still standing. By the way, push me more. Come on, fuck Reigns. <laughs> so, instead of put. Uh, Mr. Ziggler in a match tonight against Triple H. Non-title. 
with a match at WrestleMania line for Dolph Ziggler. Any match at WrestleMania. Except the main event. Which I would have gone for. <laughs> Fuck Wayne. His character, you know. Anyway, on to next matchup. Sami Zayn against The Miz. We saw Sami Zayn get involved in Kevin Owens' match against uh, Neville last week. Setting up a feud between these two guys. And it collided on SmackDown. When Sami Zayn teamed up with Neville against Miz and Kevin Owens when Miz TV broke down. But Owens for a no piece of Sami walked down on Miz. So we had a one-on-one -on -one match between Sami Zayn and Miz tonight. With Owens on commentary. Now, as much as we want to see Owens and Zayn one-on-one, -on -one, for what I'm hearing from several dirt sheets, as they call it, especially WrestleZone.com, they were aiming for a multi-man title match between Owens, Zayn, and possibly people like Miz and Neville. And that's why you saw Miz get physical with Kevin Owens in the match, especially when Owens tried to in interject himself into the match. These are little matches with these two guys. When Zayn coming with his big moves, including his big fly spots, which were awesome, boots on the floor and all that great stuff, onto Miz. But the Miz came all back with his big moves, including, of course, the big splash in the corner, even trying to go to the Skull Question finale. But then as they brought on the outside, Owens got off the announce table, got off commentary, and wanted to distract Zimmy. But then Miz attacked Owens because, like I said, it went bad after Owens walked down on Miz. So indeed, Owens got Miz distracted, and, and Sammy capitalized on that by delivering the Luffy kick, and which is a victory for Sammy Zayn, with Owens inadvertently helping Sammy Zayn win, after Miz kind of pissed him off. Like, Owens is, you know, it's Kevin Owens' show. And Kevin, KO Mania, as he calling it, KO Mania should be Kevin Owens' show. Not Kevin Owens and five other guys. Like, I like multi-man matches, but I like them if they have a purpose. And Owens does not need a multi-man match because he'd be too much in the spotlight. That's what happened last year in the multi-man ladder match. I thought it was going to stink. I was like, it was too crowded. You had too many big guys, especially when, when Daniel Bryan was in it. You know what I mean? It was a fun match, a great opener. But at the time before the match, I was like, it's too fucking crowded. You know what I mean? These guys deserve individual spots, not just being crumped together in the one match. That's what's going to happen if they decide to have an Owens multi-man match. Because Owens deserve a one-on-one -on -one match to sh really shine in spotlight. The biggest, the greatest stage of them all, Owens deserves a one-on-one -on -one match to really hide on himself. Not be a minor player in a six-man match. That's my point I'm making. So, uh, there you go. Speaking of matches that I would love to have seen individualized, like, we know that we had Sasha, Becky, and Charlotte must be a triple threat. I've been saying it for a while. We want to see Sasha, Charlotte, feud for the Divas Championship one-on-one. -on -one. Especially at WrestleMania. They would have stole the show if it was just one-on-one. -on -one. But I didn't mind Becky Lynch being at it. And I don't mind it. And they put a lot of focus on the feud. Uh, they haven't focused a lot on it. But they're going to try to focus a lot on SmackDown. They're supposed to have some confrontation tonight. But instead of focusing on that feud, tonight's match featured Divas match is all about the continuing Brie Bella Lana feud that nobody wants to see, kind of. <laughs> so Lana came out to distract Brie as she teamed up with Alicia Fox against Team Bad for many members Naomi and Tamina. Lana has been a serious bone on the side of Brie Bella. She distracted Brie last week. On wall, beating a loser in the summer way, but she did get a little slice of advantage by beating Summer Way on SmackDown Thursday. Even with Lana parading on top of the announce table, which she also did tonight on Wall. So they had an okay a little Divas tag with Tamina and Naomi coming to big neon kicks, and of course the big brutal strength of the Tamina coming with some big isolation moves onto Brie Bella. Until indeed Brie Moe was activated. The big kicks. The big yes kicks in honor of her husband. And going for a big strike. Even doing the Brie Buster off the top rope. On to Tamina. The move that, of course, Lana's been doing to 
three, not once but twice, on both Raw and SmackDown last week. But then after that, not Lana got on top of the ring apron, distracted Brie long enough to get a big double team move for Tamina and Naomi with the one through three victory for Team Bad, thanks to help from Lana. But then later on, we had a segment involving Paige. Nice blonde highlights, honey. Uh, I like the purple highlights better. When she has like the black hair, but on the ends, yeah, I like the purple hair on the ends. The purple highlights, but I like that better than the blonde highlights. Interesting. It, it's weird, on her, you know? So apparently Paige is getting involved. We have like a multi-person match, which would be great because Lana's an experience, you know? Instead of having like a one-on-one -on -one Lana against Brie, have like a six-person tag, man. It's like, have Lana team up with Team Bad against Paige, Brie, and maybe Alicia Fox or deservedly more, Natalia. At least put her in a match. So there you go. See how, see where this takes us. And it was announced tonight, speaking of matches for Mania, the Under the Giant Battle Royale is happening again. Or oh, there's a coin. The I want it, what's a mania paycheck match. Uh, says all want it, Big Show want it. And now we have another one. Too bad Cesaro's not in it this year. Because he's still injured for a few more months. Damn it. That's why this mania is so tough. You know, so many guys are out. So there you go. Now on to our next scenario. The Usos against Bo Dallas and Animals and the social jobbers. I mean, the social outcasts. Yeah, they had a rough night. They had a weird, stupid, cheap plug for Booger King's grilled dogs. It's kind of a weird, but it was, they were attempting to be funny. It was kind of funny. But there was nothing funny about the Usos coming in to beat them up. Even with the distraction from the Dudley Boys. Being at WrestleMania feud, we could get this match signed soon. Usos and Dudley have been seen as build up after the Dudley's turned here a few weeks ago. They did beat both Usos individually in one on one match, especially with help from the tables. Despite saying, oh, we're not using tables anymore, they still use them as a weapon. They didn't put people through it, they just nailed the table at the Usos in both their individual matches against both individual members of the Dudley Boys. So even the Dudley's at ringside, Usos beat up Social Arcas and basically a squasher with Bo wearing new tights, by a new outfit, new singlet. Uh, beating up everybody, super kicking everybody, frog splash, one, two, three, okay, little squasher from Usos, still eyeing on the Dudley boys. Would you probably accommodate, like I said, in the match? That was me. Now on to our next matchup Dolph Ziggler against Triple H. Non title affair. Um, as I said earlier on um, this video and also my attack sports, the Triple H Ambos match is really good. The Triple H in his first singles match, but he looked good in the match against Ambos. They had good chemistry. Same with this match. This match wasn't that bad of a match. You know, it was fun. Which way coming in with his big house of fire moves, spine buster, pedigree, attempts, all that great stuff. But Ziggler never gave up, despite Triple H nailing the punishment, taking out all his frustrations on everything. Not just backstage, because I'm hearing Triple H is not too pleased about Shane coming back, because inheritance issues. Because Triple H, he thought, you and the Reds just run the cup when Vince dies. Now Shane's back? A little bad blood. So Shane, now we got bad blood. Like, make fun of me all you want for that tail slip weapons. I'm a disc jockey and I play it, so you can't blame me. Anyway, fun match between these two guys. Great pacing. Kind of like the, kind of like the Ambrose Triple H match. Great pacing, great spots. The Dolph coming with his big moves, the super kick, the famous service. Kind of, and that was a close count. Like one, two, and there was no screwy finish, no uh, fucking cop out finish. If Dolph would have won, and that was like the closest. pin. like when he pinned them after the famous sir, it's like one. Dude, it was like, ugh, it was like the closest pain. But despite Ziggler's best effort to fight the authority, to quote the great John Mellencamp, I fight authority, authority always wins. Yeah, the fight authority, authority always wins. Yeah, there's one time Dog beat the authority at Survivor Series 24, famously. 
when he beat the authority all by himself with a little help from Sting when he was the last one standing on Team Cena. But since then, nothing happened. I thought I was going to get pushed, but nothing happened. So it's by a great effort from Ziggler. The attacks on the outside, and of course, Fibber targeting the help, the shoulder, really targeting that shoulder, nailing him against the barricade, against the poles, and all that. Triple H would capitalize on the, on the battered injuries of Ziggler. Call him the lovable loser. Better green him. 1, 2, 3, victory for Triple H. Now, there was rumors Roman Reigns was going to return tonight. He did. After the match. I thought he was going to come in during the match. I thought he was going to like screw Triple H. You know, that's what I was thinking. When this match is made, I was like, well, Roman Reigns is returning tonight. So it'll be the perfect way to screw Triple H over and get revenge after being taken out by Triple H. Then screw him over. You know, screw him over. But instead they had Triple H beat Dolph Ziggler, which was sad. Furthering burying Dolph Ziggler. Who should be pushing a lot more. More than Reigns? He's more talent. He, Dolph Ziggler's got more talent in his little finger than Roman Reigns has an entire body. Although I do did like Reigns after he came out and beat up on Triple H. He didn't have any silly, stupid jokes or anatomy jokes. He just came in, beat the shit out of Triple H, giving him the ultimate payback after what Triple H did. He beat him on the announce table, and they bought all over the arena. He beat up the referees. He punched Charles Robinson. He should have punched Michael Cole. Anyway, they bought all the way to the back after they go into the back attack area when Reigns bloodied up Triple H by nailing with a tech box, toolbox. And he even nailed him with a TV. And then the Usos came out. They tried to block him off. Even World Dog and Jimmy Noble as World Agents were trying to block him. But I, I, I don't mind Waynes coming in and attack Triple H. But it would have had more impact if Waynes would have screwed Triple H. Instead of coming in after the match. That would have done a lot more impact. You know, let Ziggler fucking win a match for once. Even if Woman helped. You know, that's, that's what it... Like, the single was well done, you know, with Reigns coming in, but it could have been a lot better. Like, like benefiting everybody. It, like, at least benefit Ziggler, too, instead of just getting squashed by Triple H just to see Roman Reigns come out. Well, rather than have seen Roman Reigns come out, distract Triple H, cost him the match, and give Ziggler a win, then beat up on Triple H. It would have drove it a lot home more if it was done that way. So there you go. So on to the next matchup. Chris Jericho against Neville. Jericho is now full on here. Like, I, I've been a fan of him as a baby face. But every time Jericho turns heel, he's one of the best heels ever in wrestling. Next to Edge, Sam Punk. Jericho, when he's heel, he nails it. Especially his vicious promo on his home country. This past Saturday on World Black. This promo today was awesome, too. Saying, you chose AJ Styles over me. You know, you're going to pay. So he took on Neville tonight in an okay matchup that ended screwing. They had a match in Japan about a year ago when Jericho was still a part time and not on television that much. And I think Neville lost that match against Jericho. But Neville won this match, a beat by disqualification. But Neville comes with big moves. So he'll come on with some big high flying moves. Jericho shoved the referee, got disqualified. He took it out of the fans, saying, Chan AJ Styles again. And here comes AJ Styles to return. And came in with a flying forearm, taking out Jericho. So, there you go. It's, it's interesting, weird sense. You know, you had Jericho looking good last week, being a crap out of AJ, turning on him with three cold breakers. And then AJ comes out one week later and just beats Jericho in one punch. I know they're trying to set up a match of Mania. Might have really loved to have seen Owens and AJ. AJ Jericho form. I like it because the match at Fastlane was good. You know. But they have seen AJ against Owens though. But maybe they'll still do that feud eventually. After AJ is done with Jericho. And after Owens is done with Sami Zayn and whoever else he wrestles at WrestleMania. If, they, if he wrestles more than one guy. 
So now on to the last segment. I thought Triple H and Ziggler would be the main event. But then when I saw him kick off the third hour, I was like, we all know what the last segment's going to be. Undertaker coming out to confront both Vince and Shane. Now, when this match was made, and I was at this wall in Detroit when this match was made, I even said in my wall review that night, I was like, it's kind of a weird scenario. Is Taker here? Is he supporting Vince? And who would win here? Like, can Taker win? Can he win cleanly? Will he lose cleanly if Shane wins? You know, so many scenarios. They make it so exciting. You know, though he wants to do it something exciting, well, they did, especially now in the fast lane. Bringing back Shane, even if it's bringing internal bad blood backstage, especially with Triple H, you know, for what I'm hearing from several reports. So Vince came out first. And he brought out The Undertaker. And Vince is like, you know who I am. You know, last week, you two weeks ago, you choked me. And say the blood on your blood on your blood on your son is gonna be on your hands, not mine. Like despite Triplets um uh, Taker being on Vince's side, he's not really fighting for him. And Taker wanted to beat up Vince again, he took out his hat and jacket. Then Shane came out. To a decent pop in Pittsburgh. Saying that Vince, you're not fast for business anymore. Then I must admit, I will take you on, Taker. I know your weaknesses. I have a heart, and I'll use my mind against you. I'm not scared of you like everybody else. Well, we'll see about that, Shane. I've seen every guy like this before. Guy comes in to challenge Taker, especially at Mania. Like, I'm not scared of you. You know what I mean? I'm going to be beating you up. I will win at Mania. Then you step in that ring at Mania, the fucking dog hits, and you literally shit your pants. Even if Taker a loss against Lesnar, he still got that mystique about him at Mania. And Shane's like, you're so tough and bad, why right? just dancing around like Vince's puppet? And Taker's like, I don't, cut, no one controls me, not you or me. Shane's like, you don't, you don't say, huh? You don't think you're controlled by Vince? Well, all I see is Vince's bitch. Bang! Trick Taker got a hold of Shane's neck, but then Shane ducks it, and he kind of said it. He's like, "I'm gonna give you a strategy. You're gonna hit me. I'm gonna duck. And then I'm gonna get you." And it's exactly almost how it played out. Taker grabbed Shane by the neck, nailed him, but then Shane ducked it. Then Shane went at Taker with the Shane on back shuffle, nailing him in the turnbuckle with some nasty punches in the ringside, like he did the security guards last week. You know, threw your punches. And then Shane, with his back turned, basically got pushed by his dad into Taker, who choke slammed him. After Vince literally fed Shane to the big bad wolf that is the Undertaker. So then after Taker choked out Shane, he wanted Vince as well. But then Vince skewered out before he got any damage done to him in his 70 year old body. So there you go. Take a standing talk. He's saying, I don't, no one controls me. But Vince is controlling you because you're the one siding with them. You're basically, whether you like it or not, whether or not you like the guy, you're basically fighting for Vince at Hell in a Cell in WrestleMania. Basically, to keep the McMahon Helmsley regime, I mean, the authority. That's what it is. The authority is kind of like a watered down McMahon Helmsley regime. Back in the 2000s, you know? You know, that era. So, there you go. There's a better, better segment than two weeks ago with Taker and Vince. Way better executed segment. Because Taker just came in for like one sentence. It was like, not good, but this was a better segment. Better executed. And it was the first physical altercation with Shane and Taker at all. During this whole feud. You know, the match has been made for like a month. And these two haven't faced off yet, which has been good for the most part, you know, keeping them away. You know, having taken that one week, then last week was Shane and Vince and the great confrontation there. Led to Shane beating up security guards after he was forced out by Vince. But then this week had all the elements involved in the matchup, all the components in this matchup. Shane and Taker being the most important components and having a fun segment to end wall, an up and down wall, a decent wall, hand down that road to WrestleMania. With that in mind, that is it. 
for my The Rewall Review this evening. Thank you so much for watching. You've just been attacked by the review from Zach. See you all soon. Yeah.